thanks for watching GarageMonkey.com. We are here at the Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca here in Monterey, California for MotoGP. Now when you think MotoGP, you don't really think green, but think again because this year they have a full electric bike race. It's actually it's in, in its second year and so we're going to talk to Bromo Bikes. They're 100% electric motorcycle and they are going to be participating in the upcoming race. So don't go away. Vehicle, the price of gas these days, uh, it's, a, it's a viable option, especially in the, on short, you know, short distance travel. I mean, to go from coast to coast in an electric vehicle isn't practical yet, but it won't be long, right? It definitely won't be long, and there's a lot of effort being put towards it. It's more than the engineers, you're also starting to see sponsors uh, and riders who are getting really excited about it. Vision Motors knows we wouldn't be out here if it wasn't for our sponsors. So we're here with Adrian Stewart, and he is part of the Bromo group here that is a 100% electric bike, so very excited to hear about this. So what kind of battery is being used in the Bromo bikes? Right, so in the first uh, in the first bike, the Inertia, we bought a battery from Valence, which is you know lithium-ion battery, um, and it became obvious to us too that batteries is kind of part of the secret sauce for people like us. So we've now designed and built our own battery called the Bramo Battery Pack. So we we buy the cells and then assemble the battery pack. We've designed and built the battery management system, which is critical because that determines how much you can push in and how it comes out and how the batteries and cells within the battery charge up. So uh, that will go into production very soon and that battery will power all the vehicles that we're launching next year. Wow, so you're definitely building it from the ground up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and how long does it hold a single charge? And how far can it go with that charge? A lot of that depends on how you ride it, of course. Sure. You know, and, and gas bikes are no different. You don't tend to notice when you're tanking the gas when you do with the battery. So the um, the Inertia Plus, that'll go um, typically 80 miles on a single charge and recharge in about four or five hours from completely empty to completely full. Plug it into a certain type of? No, um, all the bikes come with an onboard charger. So, whether you're in Europe or North America, you just plug it into a wall socket and then recharge. There is going to be a fast charge option, but then you'll need additional hardware, but then you'll have the recharge time. But for most people right now, it works just fine to plug it in when they get home and then unplug it in the morning and do whatever they're going to do. With a hybrid vehicle, when you drive it, when you come to a complete stop, everything shuts off, gas and electric, so you have to learn to drive it just a little bit differently. That's right, yep. So is, a, is an all-electric motorcycle, is it a different drive than a combustion engine? Motorcycle? It is, yeah, because there's no, um, you know, the motor doesn't idle in an electric motorcycle, so when you do come to a stop, the motor comes to a complete stop as well. Oh, it does? It, oh, that's so cool. Right. So you have to have systems on the bike, so that just to remind the rider that the bike's live and that when you twist the throttle, you will go forward. So on the inertia, we have a, a row of flashing lights that sort of twinkle away so that you can't ever be mistaken as to whether or not the bike's live. Um, and that's kind of interesting once you put the gearbox and the, and the clutch on as we're doing with the new bikes, because you can put the bike in, say, third, and then forget about the clutch and just ride and stop, ride and stop in traffic. Uh, and then if you suddenly get beyond the traffic and you want to accelerate, well then you can use the clutch and change gear and accelerate away or you know, go into a high gear and, and get the most range. So uh, it's kind of interesting because uh, you know, even though you're putting a gearbox on, you don't have to drive it with the gearbox. Very futuristic. <laughs> so with that, are, are the components in the same places as it would be with a, with a gas engine or are things differently placed because it's all electric? It depends on the make of, of motorcycles. So manufacturers are taking a different approach. With the inertia, we uh, designed a special extruded aluminum chassis uh, and that forms the cradle for the batteries as well. Uh, so it's kind of like a, an external skeleton, if you like, with the batteries in there and then the motor located low down primarily so it can you know, drive the transmission out to the rear wheel. So there are some things you can't move around very much um, and that sort of determines the layout of the bike. Um, sometimes you see uh, one-off bikes which will have a huge box on the rear which is additional battery. Um, but generally speaking, uh, you know, for commercial products people do expect it to look like a motorcycle, not too, you know, not too futuristic. Oh, that's so great. Thank you so much for your Thank time, you. Adrian. Good I'm meeting so you. so looking forward to this technology moving forward. And we are looking forward to the race, so stick around. Okay, we're here in Pit Lane, and we're at the 2011 e-Power TTX race, and it's about to start. But I want you to notice how quiet the bikes are. In fact, the only thing really making a lot of noise is the safety car. Let's take a look. Something to watch for on the Mission Motorsports uh, entry with Steve Rapp. 
can he go those extremely quick lap times for all eight laps, or does he have to back it down to save power towards the end? Until next time.